Yeah. You getting a uh, you getting a low low taper, high taper. I ain't capping if I said it, I done it, I get this good and get the I ain't never going back to like 2018. I was rapping, we're talking about nothing. What's going on YouTube? Today we got a hot taper for y'all and this is the first video inside the new shop. But our client has braids. We're gonna be showing how to get from this right here, turning the client with braids or dreads, anything like that, uh, into a hot taper. Sharp lineup, sharp everything, all this information y'all need to know, but we ain't gonna hold y'all too long, we're about to get straight into the video. So the first thing y'all wanna obviously do is uh, start combing out the hair, combing out the hair, uh, getting everything nice and lifted up off the scalp. Y'all, I hope this, this um, the fan not too loud that I got in the background. I'm gonna get it closer for y'all. But all we're doing is kind of just picking out his hair or combing out his hair. We're getting everything lifted off because we is about to cut all this bulk down to get it to a certain length because so his, you know, his, um, his cornrows or braids could like pop out or stand out a little bit more. That's what's necessary or what's required. Some people, most people do it in this world. Some people don't like to do it. But in my opinion, if you cut the braids, I mean, if you cut the hair down surrounding the braids, it'll make the braids uh, show out a little bit more. HYB right there. I got HYB everything. HYB, HYB, HYB on the shirt. <laughs> my whole entire, yeah, hand your business. Whatever, whatever you do, make sure you hand your business. That's my little, uh, my little thing. Whenever y'all, whenever y'all starting to cut the hair down, usually what I'll do, I'll take it down with a one and a half. You can start off with a one and a half, but usually the desired length, depending on the hair texture, will be a one and a half or a one guard. So we're about to do, we're about to turn it, we're going to turn this fan off because I don't know if it's, uh, so you want to start off with a one and a half guard. We're just doing this for the safety purposes of the video, just to show y'all. And it's not really cutting anything as y'all can see. So what we're going to do, we're going to switch to our number one guard. Boom. One, number one guard and we're going to, uh, start cutting all the hair down around the, that's not the braids. Don't cut the braids. Don't cut people dreads, don't cut people with braids. Please. Bread. <laughs> some people be cutting into them, some people, you don't do that. Just cut around it. And we're gonna uh, keep doing this on both sides, making sure everything even and getting, the, getting it down to our des desired length. And this is our foundation. This is what we're gonna start the cut with. We don't wanna start the cut when the hair is all lifted up and then not at the end of the cut, we don't, we gotta cut it down because Truly and honestly, if we kept all this bulk right there, we'll be cutting into a number two guard or a one and a half, because you've seen the number one and a half wouldn't cut anything down. So truly and honestly, we'll be cutting it down to, uh, or blending up into a two guard, and then now we're trying to cut everything down. Now our blend gonna be all choppy. It's gonna be a, um, a two guard up here, and then we cut it down with the one and a half, and then a one and a half guard, we probably would have blended way down here. So it, it just wouldn't work out. So make sure you cut the hair down, establish a nice, firm, good foundation for yourself. And then you want to start setting all your guidelines and fading with the rest of the haircut. And for the back for the cornrows, you just want to lift up the cornrows and then get everything below it. You don't want to keep all this bulk. You want a nice, strong foundation. Nice, strong foundation. I don't really need no, no attachments or nothing like this. Uh, sort of like this. You can use these, these little Velcro strips or anything like that and place them to the side. But at the end of the haircut, his braids won't be able to fall back down. So I'm choosing to just move it, just like that, just for right now. Let me get all that. Just so I can get all these little pieces of hair. So what we're about to do is we're about to set in our first initial guideline. Our first initial guideline, because it is a high taper, we're gonna start from the bottom of his C cup, which would be right here, or the beginning of his C cup, I'm sorry, the beginning of his C cup, and meet it down to a point to where it's over his ear, which would be around this area. We don't wanna end it up right here because his tape would be way up here and looking all crazy and stuff like that. You can set it in with the, with the faders, with the clippers, or you can set it in with a pair of trimmers. But we're gonna do it with the clippers because it's easier to take that first guy line out. And my clip is all zero gap. So this first guy line will be the same thing. It's setting it in with the trimmers and it'll be bold. Second thing you wanna do is open up the level all the way. Every time we set in a new guideline or a new, um, every time we put on a new guard or whatever, it's gonna be level all the way open. So level all the way open, and we setting in this second guideline right here. Depending on how, how, you know, how thick you want your guideline, 
is the is depending on how much room do you have to work with? How much room does he have for his table to work with? And how extended do you want the blend to be? For all, for my tapers, for my high tapers, I like to do high and low tapers almost. If uh, if that makes any sense to y'all, we're just not gonna be fading up high. We don't want all this to look bald and then hair up here. We want it to look like a nice uh, blendable transition. And to get that, you don't make your guidelines as thick or as big. So we're about to do now. It just slowly close the level until we get to where we first started with the level all the way closed. So all the way open, go down a notch, fade right beneath the line that we had just set in. Go down a little bit more, go a little bit underneath that. Every time you close the level, you should never be in the same exact position or same exact area that you just faded in. You should always be in a new, uh, a new area. Unless you want to cause yourself to blend up higher than what you uh, really want. Now we're going to start the downfading process. The downfading process, just because I cut everything down with the one and a, uh, a one guard, we're going to take this one and a half guard and start cutting everything down. We're going to start with the level open just to be safe. And if that don't cut nothing, then we could go down to the next uh, into half, halfway open. and then close. And the reason why we started with the one and a half is just because it's the next guard higher to the one guard. And the one guard is where we cut everything down with. And fading down is the genuine process of, or a gradual process of moving from the highest guard down to the lowest guard that you'll possibly be using. One guard all the way open, and we're picking up from where we left off with the one and a half. And I'm going against the grain. The sides of the hairs on this side is moving towards this direction, so I have to fade in the opposite direction that it's going, which will be this way. And you're just slowly moving down. You can detail as you go, close the level a little bit more, fade a little bit more down, close it a little bit more, move down within the side of the fade. And y'all, I might be a little rusty because this is my first video back after like, what, two, two weeks, almost three weeks. I've been building up clientele out here. I've been trying to get, you know, more people, more people for y'all, more videos for y'all. So, now as soon as we reach the bottom, this is where we're going to throw in our .5 guard, our 1.5. Y'all always used to call us the half guard. We're going to throw in our 1.5. This is the smallest guard that you should have. And we're going to start right here, level all the way open, this last guideline that we need to take out. We're going to detail all up here more, getting all of that out of there. <clears throat> so 1.5, level all the way open, and you're taking out this last guideline. This last guideline is in between the one guard and the, uh, the second guideline that we had set in with the level all the way open. This is what this half guard is going to do. Detail, use your corners. As you go, I know some people, some people use the corner of their blade the whole entire cut. I haven't tried that yet, but I will try that in the future. And you just want to move the level down to where this line just starts to disappear. Right? Really don't take that much. Now we have the level all the way closed. All right, now we're about to start our detailing process. For our first detailing process that we're going to do, we're going to start off with the comb. We always detail with the comb. The comb lifts everything needed up off of the scalp. So we do want to detail this area right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to open up our level all the way, and we're going to do our rake down technique. And we're lightly pressing. And all we're doing is making sure the hair goes where the hair wants to lay down at. That's what we're doing. We're just getting it in this natural pattern, I say. Our natural flow. Move the lever down until it starts cutting. Because all bulk is, it's just a clump of hair all next to each other. That's all it is. Piled up on top of each other that you just really just got to break down into little tiny pieces of hair. Or dividing the pieces of hair. And that's all what detailing is used for, just to make a blend more blended, blendier, I would say. So move down in the fade. Um, whenever you close this level, you should always move down in the fade as well. 
unless you risk putting a line there of some sort and you do not want that. Another step will be to open up the lever all the way and to use the corner of your blade. Basically slicing and dividing each piece of hair into individual pieces of hair. Two hairs, you always to, uh, hear me say two hairs into one, three hairs into, well you can't really do three hairs <laughs> unless you do like 0.5 or uh, six hairs into three. And you really just take and split up each individual piece of hair that's clumped up together. This will be a dark spot. These little pieces will be a dark spot. And all we're doing is just getting rid of those. If you want your haircuts to go to the next level, you have to learn how to detail. This is an important part. And I'm, I'm showing you all three levels of detailing that I do. And then we're gonna take a razor comb. A razor comb is used to detail even further. They got a big side on my razor comb and they got a smaller side. So we're gonna take the big side and just go down in the blend. And the razor comb just smoothens out the blend a lot more. Use the smaller side. You can kind of tilt it a little bit to get it cutting the, uh, the hairs that you want. If it's not cutting, you kind of got to tilt it a little bit more to get that angle needed to, uh, to cut these hairs that's lifted up off the, uh, the scalp. And I've already started this side. What we're doing is just same thing we did to the other side. We're doing uh, the same exact repeated process. Just moving down, we're at the one guard position right now. We already debulked the one and a half. And we're at the one guard position right now. Level all the way close. Same as eight steps, same as eight tactics process, same as like everything. We're not switching one side up, uh, making it different than the other side. That's how we're gonna get an inc inconsistent fade. We want a consistent fade. We want everything to look the same. We want everything to look symmetrical. More, the more symmetrical your haircut is, man, the, uh, the better the end goal is, the better the high, the better it's gonna turn out. So, you really want everything looking similar. And to get a similar uh, look on both sides, you do the same exact things. It's just as simple as that. And these steps are real easy, man. Anybody can understand these steps and apply it to their system and stuff like that. Uh, take some stuff from this system. It's really a fast system as well. You just gotta learn your system. You, you add quickness behind the stuff that you already know. Once you get a nice little system down and you're not just out here, you know, doing random stuff. Um, that's why I teach the same exact thing. Almost every single haircut, you know, it may be a different hair shape or it may be a different texture and stuff like that, but every single thing that I do on everybody, no matter what the hair texture is, anything like that, it's always the same as steps. I already know how to attack it. I already know the system that I'm going to use. I might have to use a bigger guard or some sort, but it's all just the same thing, man. I never switch it up. Never switch it up. Always the same exact thing. So the back section right here, we're going to take a brush, brush everything down. And then we're going to start setting in that first guard line. Level all the way close. Same exact steps for the back as well. We're gonna set in the back is a more rounded shape of a, like a circular almost shape, half of a circle or oval, if I would say, just so we can bring out the, the neckline up a little bit more. The, ne the neckline up will stand out a lot more when you uh, set, it, set in the lines like that. Level all the way open, going up a little bit. About a half an inch, not too far up. Then continue to fade down, moving the lever till we get to all the way close where it just first started, uh, started off. Now we're gonna take the one and a half guard, go all the way up, debug all this hair. And now we're gonna switch to our one guard and start the fading down process. Level all the way open. I like to start in the middle, then work my way to the right side because I am right-handed, and then work my way to the left side as well. After that, level all the way open. Keep in mind, whenever you're working your way down, you also have another guard that's coming, which will be the .5 guard. So whenever you reach the level all the way close, you're not gonna reach it right here because that's obviously the .5 guard. 
So now after we're done with the tape, we did take it to the 1.5 guard and faded it all the way out. So what we're gonna do now is spray our holding spray. Spray our holding spray, lift down the air, and spray all right here by the neck line up. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Make sure y'all can see. All right, uh, the holding spray, you don't really need too much. Uh, it's really just, it just holds the hair. It does what the name intends. Uh, it holds down the hair, it holds down everything needed to make a nice, crispy, sharp lineup. Now we want to blow dry on cold. On cool up, cool up is the key, bro. Cool up is the key to a sharp, crispy line. Cool up, uh, holding spray, and some inner alcohol pad. That's all you need, man. You don't need nothing else. You can't use a hot towel. The hot towel is a plus for the front of the lineup. I know, um, you know, the bulb up in here was telling me he wrap it all the way around the head. But the way I kind of set things up, uh, I already have holding spray on the back of their neck, so I can't wrap it around the head because the holding spray is already dried and everything is set in. By the time I do the, um, the towel. Make sure it's nice and dry. You can kind of take your pinky and kind of just rub in that area. And we're getting it nice and dry. We're about to lean it back, do the hot towel process and everything. And then I'm gonna show y'all how to do the lineup. All right, all we're doing for the hot towel process, we're getting some shaving cream. Shaving cream is what I use. We put it on the front of his lineup. And we're gonna distribute it all around. You really don't need to get it all right there, just on the front of the area that you're trying to, you know, line up and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do now after we add that, we will take a small brush and kind of brush his hair forward. This is just ensuring that everything is nice and laid down. Then we're gonna add another coat on top. Smaller coat, don't have to be too much, just make sure it's all over the hair. Don't really press down or misdirect the pieces of hair that we just laid down forward. And then after that, we're gonna add the hot towel, warm towel. You don't want it too hot, you wanna do a wrist check. If it's too hot for your wrist, it's too hot for the client's forehead. And just place the hot towel on your client. And what you want to do, you just kind of just want to wait till the towel get cold. Or just wait one to two minutes if you really, um, you know, on a 30 minute time schedule. It shouldn't take that long for the towel to do what it needs to do. All it is is just activating the, um, just kind of just warming up the, the hair follicles and stuff like that. So you're able to kind of manipulate and the hair is able to lay down. That's all the hot towel and the shaving cream do is help the hair lay down a little bit more than usual. And then it also, I want to say it dries out the scalp a little bit or the lineup so you can get a more crispier lineup on top of adding, you know, the, um, the alcohol pads or whatever you may be using. So after it's been a certain amount of minutes, um, it's been only about two minutes, one minute, one and a half minutes, something like that. He says completely laid down. We want to get all his excess off. What I do, I'll get it off. Let me show y'all, let me zoom out a little bit. I take it off, fold it, and I just use one side and just go forward. You're going forward, you're not going backwards, you're not scrubbing side to side. That would um, defeat the purpose of us using a hot towel to lay the hairs uh, down. Then after that, what you want to do, get a little cotton strip or a cotton pad. This is what I use. Get your alcohol, spray it on there. You don't want it too, too wet or nothing like that because when we press it down, it's going to, you know, alcohol going to drip down and maybe get in the client size. You don't want that to happen. So do it a little bit to where there's enough alcohol so you can see it on his skin. I can see all the alcohol going on his forehead, on, on his lineup. And basically just cleaning the area. Cleaning the area of the shaving cream that we just used. So after you use alcohol, cotton swab or whatever you want to use, uh, you can use uh, some tissue paper, you can use a neck strip. Neck strips is more common for barbers that don't have cotton swabs yet. So after you do that, you want to get your blow dryer and you want to blow dry it on cooler again. You can kind of use uh, your thumb or whatnot just to see, you know, the, the dryness of the, the lineup. I feel like the, the, the alcohol will kind of break down the, the holding spray and you won't be able to use the holding spray. The holding spray won't work more efficiently than, you know, as, it, as it's attended to. And then we just want to spray a little bit. Spray a little bit. If you spray a little bit, you won't get as much of a glare. But I feel like you still, no matter who you are, you'll still get a glare with the, uh, with the holding spray. 
and then blow dry on cool them. You and what I like to do, I like to go to the, at the bottom of the neckline up first and then go all the way and make the curve or work inside and work into the curve. I'm gonna get all this here underneath it. And for the neckline, you kind of just want to work with what the client has. You don't want to take it up too high. Uh, it's called white walling somebody when you take it up too high. So you don't want to take it up too high. And you're not really pressing down because the neck is one of the most sensitive areas for a client. And just follow the outlay that's already done for you. Making a perfect curve. Just like that. I want to say it's myself being, uh, I don't know if the correct word is arrogant, uh, being prideful or something like that. I don't know. So the first thing you want to do with the lineup is determine what side is the strong side and what side is the weak side. All clients don't have no strong side or no weak side. This lineup is pretty strong all the way around, which is good. So all we have to do is just work towards our dominant hand or whatever hand we feel comfortable with and just make the lineup. So first to begin off with any lineup, you do want to start right there in the middle. This is our connecting point for each side. The left side and the right side. I'm gonna be working towards the right side because I am right-handed and that's the side I feel most comfortable working towards first. So you make the first initial guideline right there, a line, and then you just simply just work towards one side. While working towards a particular side, right or left, I'm only gonna be, I'm splitting my blade into two and I'm only working with this right side of the blade while going on um, to the right side of his lineup. Because as humans we tend, we can't, we don't, we don't hold a perfect straight lineup every single time. So I'm going off of the line that I previously set by working in, by matching this side of the blade with the rest of the lineup and then making a new lineup right there. Because we can, I can go way over here, but I don't know if my hand is tilted up or tilted down or anything like that. So, a little bit up right there. And we're just gonna slowly work our way to this right side. Taking a step back, looking at the line up, going back in, making our little micro adjustments, making sure everything is straight. You do wanna stand back and look at everything just to make sure you're on the right track, on the right path. Once you make your way all the way to the right side, you do want to set in the vertical bars. We're not going to do it up and down. We're going to add a little slant to it. The slant helps create that boxy shape that we want or that boxy line that we want. And all the hairs after that, we just cut it all off. Or in front of it, we just cut it all off. Now we work our way to the opposite side. Whenever we're working on the opposite side, we do want to revert right back to the middle. And then only, we're only using the left side of our blade now. Slowly working our way over. And before you make it to the other side, what you want to do is, you want to see the placement of this vertical ball and make sure it's in the same exact, exact identical place as the other side. Symmetrical is everything when it comes to having a nice haircut. You gotta make sure the fade is the same, you gotta make sure the lineup is the same, everything is the same. And that right there will set you apart from a lot, a lot of people. So it ends about right here, right before his eyebrows end, like right around this area right here. So that's where we gotta take the lineup to. Just a little bit more over. Take a step back, look at everything and then add the vertical ball. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the enhancements. The first line of enhancements that we're gonna use is the pencil. I'm using the tan pencil for his client just because of the skin color. I have three different types of pencils which I'm about to show y'all real quick. I got, I got this white one, this tan one, and this brown right here. All three of these are used on different uh, hair or skin colors, I would say. So we're using the tan color because he is a, brown skin, light skin client. And all we're gonna do is trace over the line. We're not gonna add too much pressure. 
unless this line will be harder to, uh, you know, take off or get away. And we're not touching the hair with this. We're just doing a per perimeter of his lineup. That's all we gotta do. And all we're doing is just tracing the line that we just set in. Not making a new line. You don't put this on before you do the lineup. Making a, creating a fake lineup. We don't want that. And boom. I do this on most clients. I don't really show this on YouTube, but I'm showing it today. Just to make this line up pop out a little bit more. Add it right there. You don't want to go all the way. Don't go all the way to the beginning of the lineup, like right here on this area and right here on this area. You really just want to add it around right here. And that's really it. But this side of the lineup, you can take your trimmers. You can use our Stylecraft, take your trimmers, go to the lineup and just come down. It don't really take too much. You don't really have to do too much. Just take it and just go down. And that's all that's needed for that. We don't need no razor blade or nothing like that for that area. And we're gonna add some to the other side real quick. Now we're about to add the enhancements. With the enhancements, we do not want to add a lot of black spray. That's one thing I kind of focus on, not adding a lot, just giving the, just enhancements. Enhancements are made to enhance the cut. They're not made to make a whole new haircut, y'all. It's just made to enhance the cut a little bit. See what you want to do, get your card. I got this clutch uh, 245 card. Just spray two sprays. One, two, move on. One, two, move on. We want an enhanced but natural looking haircut. One, two, move on. Don't really take that much. You can see as I'm doing two sprays right now, it still look like a good amount of black spray. Sometimes when I first started out, I didn't really notice or realize what I was doing when I was using it. I used to boom, 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 boom. We don't really see it coming out until we stab back and then look at the haircut. So you really only want to do two sprays. One, two, move on. And then now to make it all come together, what we're going to do, we're going to get the razor blade, we're going to lean them back, use the razor blade, bend the, blend the pencil in with the razor blade, and that should make it all pop out. And as y'all can see, the razor really brings out the line and makes everything pop for real. And y'all, I'm trying to be quiet because they got other people up there. It's just something I got to get used to for real. And all we're doing with a razor blade is pulling the scalp just a little bit, not putting no pressure on the razor, and just letting it glide across the skin. And all this, this isn't like dead skin or nothing like that. It just builds up from the holding spray that's kind of on the lineup or builds up on the lineup and creates that sharp, crispy look that we want. Y'all, I'm giving y'all all the game, all the stuff that y'all need to be successful. Step by step, this is a full tutorial on everything that I physically do. And watch this right here. Increase a nice sharp look. You don't need to use the um, the trimmer to kind of blend in the line. Use the razor blade, it's way better. It's a way better look. And y'all, this is the hookah right here. A nice, clean, hot table for y'all. Follow these steps, man. Y'all get the same type of results. I'm about to do a little spin around for y'all. Simple steps. I use these steps on every single client that I ever have. I'm gonna get a close up on the lineup real quick. Boom. And that's it. This H for beef and not having any business in what you're doing. Please don't do anything crazy. crazy.